Hey everybody, this is Andrew with MobileBurn.com and I said I would do an HTC One hands-on and that's what I'm doing right now. There's no time like the present. But since they gave out review units, I decided to leave the event because it was terrible lighting and music in there anyway. So now we can focus on the device itself. This is a quick unboxing and first impressions. As far as specs go, we pretty much know what to expect. We've all seen the leaks ad nauseum. We know it's got the 2.3 gigahertz quad-core processor, the two gigs of RAM, the 2600 milliamp battery, all that stuff that you saw in our post on the specs. But let's talk about some of the other things that you get when you purchase a new HTC One or the M8 as they called it, the Mate as I'm going to call it annoyingly. And quick thing, when you open up the box, you notice that they have something called HTC Advantage. This is actually something they mentioned previously. If your phone cracks, uh, within the first year, you'll get a uh, first six months, you'll get a free one time replacement. No questions asked. Uh, this deal was primarily in, in the Americas. This was an offer made by ACC America. Not sure if that's available in the global version. You also get another perk, which is 50 gigabytes of free online storage through Google Drive. And of course, you get Android software, a commitment to update for the next two years. So when Android 4.9 or whatever comes out two years from now, HTC is saying, we promise to deliver it to you. But now that we've got that out of the way, we can focus on the device. And you've seen that too. So this is pretty much like deja vu. You know what to expect. You're going to have a metallic body, which looks very nice. Very similar to what we've seen before with the 2013 model of the HTC One. So there are no surprises, save for a few things. Key point right here, you notice that it has two cameras in the back now. It has a duo camera, which were pretty much designed for software tricks. So if you want to focus on the foreground and background, let's say you have two things close to the camera and two things in the background, they're going to take photos at the same time with different cameras and there's software tricks that allow you to choose between which side you're going to focus on. That's pretty interesting. They're both 4 megapixel cameras and to help you in low light conditions they have two-tone uh, flash. So it's going to flash and it'll pick up different uh, subjects. So if you're picking up uh, someone's face, it knows which type of flash to apply and it knows what type of settings to do so you can get the best photo. Sticking with the camera, on the front they have a 5 megapixel camera. Now I know it's strange that they would make a higher megapixel count for the front camera than the back camera, which you're more likely to use more often, but for you selfie addicts out there, at least you have that option. You also notice the notification light blinking right below the speakers. Once again, we've got the dual front facing speakers, boom sound, but this time They've changed the audio chamber to let in more sound, so you've got, uh, they say, 25% more audio without sacrificing clarity. We're going to put that to the test later on in the full review, but that's something that you need to know now. At the top, you'll notice that this entire section is now black, but before we used to have just one little IR uh, blaster. I haven't confirmed, but I believe this entire top part is now an IR blaster, so it should be very easy to control your television with the device. Unfortunately, one thing that I really hated about the one is that they put the power button all the way at the top. So unless you had giant hands, and I'm someone with giant hands, and I still have to maneuver the phone to get to the power button, that's something that I'm not too keen on, but it's an option that's available, and that's the way you're going to have to deal with it. Now when we get into the specifics of the phone, we already know that it's got the 5-inch display, and it looks pretty nice. It's very reminiscent of what we saw with the original one. It's bright. It's a super LCD and it's 1080p resolution. So when you look around, you know exactly what to expect. There are a couple of changes that they made in sense. That's where you're really going to notice things uh, take a turn a little bit. When you look at the new Blink feed, you can see how they've changed uh, the way that things are spaced, the way that things are designed. It's more of like a grid like approach. It's less chaotic than what we saw before. There's more definition between different sections. When you drag down, oh, let me get rid of that, get rid of that, you get access to your notifications and you see all these little different settings that you can play around with. So I'm going to change that. You can tap to edit them and they do a little guide to tell you how to do everything. But I'm in a settings menu right there. When you drag down with two fingers, it takes you straight into that settings section. So as you saw, I changed the brightness. And when you go into settings, you see that they've made some other changes. Uh, for instance, there are now themes. So the accent color right now is currently green. 
if I go to personalize, I believe it is, let me see. Okay, personalize, and then I go to theme. If I switch to this other theme and press apply, yes, you'll see now my accent colors are orange. So that's a, a nice little touch that they've made to give you more control over the device. You've got your SIM slot, uh, SIM slot over here. Uh, it is nano SIM. You have micro SD, a, and it's pretty big. That's before we complained about the small storage on the original ACC one. It was only 16 or 32 gigabytes. This is a 32 gigabyte amount of storage, and you have uh, 128 gigabytes for your micro SD slot. Your volume buttons are raised a little bit more. It's no longer that little flat surface and they still feel nice. And that's pretty much what you can say on first impressions of the HTC One. It feels nice. I have the regular silver. It's an anodized metal. It's very similar to the material used last year. If you get the gun metal, it'll feel slightly different, but it's still gonna be a nice premium feel. These are light phones. These are taller than they were last year very comfortable to hold. They're a little more curved, less, the, the curves along the top you can see, it tapers off at the edges a little more, so it feels a little more comfortable. At the bottom, you got your micro SD and headphone jacks as well. While we're on the issue of the camera, it is, they've changed the UI as well. I'm gonna do a, a camera walkthrough in a separate video, but if you just wanna know what you can expect when you get the HTC One, here is the phone. And of course, inside the box, it comes with your requisite chargers and a nice little cheap pair of headphones that you can use made by HTC. This is Andrew with MobileBurn.com taking a very quick look at the HTC One M8, not the all new HTC One, we're just gonna call it the M8. Be sure to check back later so you can see a full review of the phone as well as the camera walkthrough. Until next time, thanks for watching.